IPv6 summary routes. What exactly is a summary route, you might ask? You've come to the right place. Let's begin. Our objective in this micro nugget is simple, is to identify what in the world is a summarization and how would we actually implement one in an OSPF network with IPv6. Let's use an example to get on the same sheet of music together, you and I. We walk into a store and we ask the clerk, can you tell us where the Twinkies are? And the clerk says, sure. I'd be happy to guide you towards that area. They are on the right half side of the store. So there's a left side and a right side, and the Twinkies are kept on the right side. Now, that's not the exact details for that network. However, it does get, a, does get us moving in the right direction. Well, in an IPv6 network, we are gonna have millions and millions of networks. And to avoid having millions and millions of individual routes, we can have summary routes that get us in the right direction. An example of how we could summarize a couple of routes and make it just one summary would be these two networks down here. I've got the 45A and the 45B subnets. Here's my major network. I've also written out the 45A and 45B up here. If we looked at R1's routing table, which we should do right now, we're gonna see that it has both of those routes, both of those 64-bit routes in it. Let's take a quick peek at that right now. On R1, let's take a quick look at the routes as, in fact, I'm gonna filter this a little bit. The show IPv6 route OSPF will show us all the routes and the pipe and the include will say, please only output the lines that include 45A and 45B. And that way only the two routes, hopefully that we're interested will show up. And if we take a look at the output, sure enough, we have two inter-area OSPF routes that have been learned. That's because the routes were sourced from area 45, our ones in the backbone, that's make some inter-area OSPF routes, and they are both slash 64s. And then we'd tell R2, because he's an area border router, to advertise the summary instead of the individual detailed routes. So R2 is gonna hold back information regarding those two slash 64s and advertise the appropriate summary. My objective in this micro nugget wasn't to get into the bits of the actual creating the summary, but I would like to show you show my work. <laughs> so here's our two subnets, 45A and 45B. Out of this last four bits, which is A and B, that's the A and that's the B, the mask would go right there. So our, our summary would be 2001 DB8 6783 45A slash 63 because the high order 63 bits are in common. The most important part for this discussion is that is the appropriate summary that R2 should use to summarize the 45A and the 45B. Now, how do we implement it? In the routing process for OSPF, we're simply gonna tell R2, guess what? We want you to, for area 45, to use this summary address, press enter, and it's done. R2 will now start advertising the summary, suppressing the more detailed routes, and then R1 would have one less route to keep track of. He has one summary route that's referring to both of these more detailed networks. So on R2, who has to do the heavy lifting here because all the configuration for the summary is on R2 for those two networks, let's first of all go into configuration mode. I just want to verify also that this R2 on the screen is really the R2 here. I want to verify that he's connected to area 45. It's hard to do a summary for an area you're not connected to. So it appears he is on his gig 20 interface. And let's go ahead and set up the summary. To do so, we're going to go into IPv6 configuration mode for OSPF and then specify area 45, which is the area for which we want to do the summarization on, and we're gonna specify the summary of 2001 db 8678345 a with a slash 63-bit mask. And we're done. Now OSPF has already converged. It's very quick to do it. If we go back to R1 and hit the up arrow, it's gonna now show us, hey, guess what? I have one inter-area route. It's no longer 64 bits, it's 63, but guess what, that slash 63, it correctly represents both of those subnets. And we should still have connectivity to devices down in that network. We can verify that with a quick ping. So on R1, I happen to have on the R5 has an IP address on that subnet, it's colon five. So let's go ahead and ping that. So we'll ping out to 2001 DB8 6783 45B colon colon five and that works. And we can also verify that with a trace. We could do a trace to that same address and that'll help us verify the comfort level that's going from R1 to R2 to R5 going down to that device. So R1 is sourcing it and it's going to R2 and R5 and that's indicative of the IP addressing scheme I'm using. The last number in the IPv6 host ID is reflecting the router number who owns that IP address. 
In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at the concept of summarization. And in our example, we created a single summary route that represented two more detailed routes. Now, just saving one routing entry on a local topology isn't a big deal. But in a larger environment like the internet with IPv6, we could have a single route that represents tens of thousands of more detailed networks. And the concept of summarization applies to IP version 4 and IP version 6. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.